so I was feeling kind of bad the other day. I was playing ranked and I was queuing in and I was winning, but I'm just kidding. I, I wasn't winning. I wanted to feel like I was winning, but I was losing. And so that's where I started to research a little bit more about why. Why was I losing so many games? I felt like I was doing everything right, but for some reason I just couldn't get to the ball. Some of you may feel like this in ranked. You're playing and you feel like you're slow, you don't have enough boost, it's just you're behind. You can't keep up. Everybody's better than you. <sighs> you see, I went from playing like a god one day, went to bed feeling like a, a Rocket League hero, and then woke up and felt like a Rocket League pleb. But after hours of YouTube videos, after days of meditation, I figured out the secret trick. Listen up. It's a thing called... Momentum. That's right, it's it's called momentum. And Dumbledore is doing the wrong thing. He's actually stopping <clears throat> your momentum. And it might be good if you're falling from the sky, but you're not. You're a rocket car with boost and wheels. And if you get blown up, you come back to life. You know, it's kind of like magic. So let's not arresto our momentum. And how about we maintain it? And I'll show you how. And I'll show you why it's so important. Let's begin. <clears throat> and uh, one more thing. This is the best way to train momentum without being in game. So we're going to head to free play. We're going to head to the options menu and we're going to make sure that the unlimited boost in free play is turned off. Now get yourself in the game and we're going to start doing a lot of circles. So the objectives are these three things. Number one, you're going to collect the small pads only. Number two, you're going to maintain sonic speed, which is the maximum speed your car can go by feathering boost and circling around the ball. And number three, to make it a little more challenging, you're going to keep your eye on the ball in the middle and only rely on your spatial awareness to collect those small boost pads. Now, when you're able to do this and you can do it consistently and maintain sonic boom, Go ahead and start cutting in towards the ball and seeing if you can maintain your velocity then. Go ahead and hit maybe a shot or two with high speed and feel the speed difference. And basically mess around with this. If you want to, switch sides, switch angles. Um, just get creative with this, but the objective is to maintain sonic speed at all costs. If you do this enough, when you get to the real game and put it to practice, you'll start to see a lot of difference between how slow you've been playing and how fast you could be playing. Now there is something to note, this is a lot easier the wider you take your car around the map. So in game, if you're always trying to consider what the best move is, maybe it's better to take a wide angle to maintain speed. Obviously it's not the best option every time as there are people that you need to challenge and you may have to stop your car's momentum a little bit, however, at the level that you're currently at and for most people, maintaining momentum, which maintains boost, which maintains speed, will make the world of difference. You will see less demos on your own car. You will start to see the game at a slower rate because you're moving faster. You'll start to see things slower, which is good because you'll be able to make decisions a little bit clearer than other people. And number three, it just makes the game more enjoyable. I mean, it's fun to be zoomy and you don't have to do this recklessly. You have to watch your teammates and make sure you're putting yourself in good position. However, this will make you play quicker and eventually your, your talents and those things that you're working on, they'll come out naturally because you'll have less time to think about them and you'll actually start to see a lot better shots and a lot better positioning and hopefully a lot more rank ups. It would be totally wrong for me to not mention it, but obviously there are mechanical moves you can make in Rocket League that will maintain your momentum, and those things are primarily wave dashing, recoveries, and half flips. I could go over these if you guys would like, but there are thousands of videos out there explaining how to do these well, and really it's just a lot of practice and free play and, and just getting used to mechanics, and you'll be able to do this pretty much without thinking about it. The thing you need to start thinking about are the subtleties in gameplay that you make that really ultimately make the whole difference of if you have good momentum or if you don't. So we're going to break down a couple of these scenes coming up and we'll make it very clear. Let's go. The first demonstration is going to be the RLCS Season 7 World Finals, a game between Vitality and G2. And obviously this is now going to be between Scrubkilla and Rizzo. We've got Scrubkilla on the right, we've got Rizzo on the left. 
and the ball is up there on top of orange goal and here are the facts so number one the ball is pretty much going straight down not going to go very far chicago just hit it off the ceiling so it's moving downwards scrub killer is now at 76 boosts down on the ground rizzo has 23 boost and according to this photo they're about equidistant to the ball scrub killer might be a tad bit closer and rizzo is just maybe a little bit farther away so with these three facts laid out we're gonna roll the clip and we're gonna see what happens and i think you'll find out that the momentum is very different between one car and the other Ah, you're probably saying that was a little too fast to see. Well, that's called momentum, and if you can't see that, then you're helpless. You should stop the video right now. I'm just kidding. So we're going to play Rizzo about five seconds before the play starts, and we're going to see a move up field with very low boost. I think he maybe missed a pad or two, but watch him go downfield, keeping his car in forward momentum, and makes a really fast play with minimum boost, and just basically set up the goal and the ultimate win. I don't think you have any idea how fast I really am. I'm fast as fuck, boy. And so here's Scrub Killer's perspective. You can definitely see the slowdown of momentum. He almost comes to a complete halt. And I mean, that's what really makes it impossible for him to get this save. Now, there are a couple options here. He could have taken his car a little bit more wide and given himself more space to build up that momentum when the ball was hit. He could have just went through the goal and saw that Fairy Peak was on the wall to his right and realized that he probably had the next save, or he could have just not slowed down. Great, so you just saw an example of how important momentum is, and even in the RLCS, you know, Rizzo had 23 boosts to scrub kill a 76, and he was still able to get to the ball first because he kept the momentum of his car moving forward better than scrub killer did. All right, let's analyze clip number two. I am on defense, orange team is pressing us on offense, and I am, let's say, in the perfect position to where I need to be. Now, I have two things that I can do. Number one, like in the photo, I can sit here on the wall and wait for the ball to be hit maybe towards me or towards goal. Or number two, I can move my car and keep it in motion to maintain momentum to hit the next ball if it comes to me. Let's see what I did. Now let's take a look at this from the orange side perspective and see what my car does. And I actually look like I don't know what I'm doing, but it is all to maintain momentum. And actually, if we take a look to the right, if I didn't do that and I kept my car just to the right and decided not to move, and let's say I missed the ball that hit off the backboard, this little guy right here would have punched up, knocked it in, and my team would have said, Wow. Wow. What a save. All right, let's look at clip number three. We've got me here in the middle. Orange has possession. I am the last guy back, so I've got to make a really important save. At the moment where the screen is paused, I am supersonic. You see the trail coming off my wheels. I have 68 boost, and I've got to figure out what to do. Now, there's a couple options as well. Obviously, I could challenge right now. I could go towards goal and defend the whole goal. And I also have the option of shadow defending. Let's see which one I pick. All right, so if I had decided the challenge, at best, I would have had a 50-50 that would have popped up anywhere, and the orange team had a big advantage because I was the last one back, so they had to make a simple shot after that. If I had turned back towards goal, I potentially could have made the save. However, I would have left open a giant portion of the field for him to do just about anything with the ball. So I decided to shadow defend, and if we look at it a little bit closer, I actually chose the option that gave me the most amount of momentum and gave me the best opportunity to make this save. So again, I'm in supersonic right now as this clip starts, and you'll see that I lose supersonic just for a short amount of time, and it actually only takes 20 boosts to get back up to supersonic, which means I was supersonic or just below the level of supersonic for the majority of this play, which means I was at a very high speed with minimum boost used. Also, I was curious about how much boost it did take to get to supersonic, starting from a complete halt and starting at 81 boost, which is a terrible number to start at. It took 52 boosts to get to supersonic, which is about 30 boosts more than the last clip, and that is absolutely massive while you're in game. Guys, thank you so much for watching the video. I really hope you found something out of this, and if you learned something, type it down below in those comments. Please, if you want, if you really enjoyed it, leave a subscription, hit that bell. I'm going to be uploading here very often. Um, 
yeah, just seriously, thank you guys, and hope to see you later on.